everyone. My name is Bengmin Kim. I'm climate scientist uh, who is working for Department of Environmental and Atmospheric Sciences, Bukyong uh, National University. Before I moved to the university here, uh, ten years or uh, five years before, I worked for Korean Polar Research Institute, and over there I studied uh, Arctic climate change and. Actually, I had a great interest uh, to explore the connection between Arctic climate change and middle latitude extreme weather since then. So today I would like to present my and my colleagues work on exploring the connection, the linkage between uh, Arctic and uh, middle latitude. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Uh, now, everybody knows global warming is occurring and it causes huge temperature increases all over the world. But the temperature increase has a specific pattern. Uh, general people doesn't know the pattern, but the uh, specific region uh, experiences uh, most uh, biggest temperature increases, for example, Arctic is actually warming four times faster than uh, global average temperature. So there is uh, many consequences because of this huge temperature increase. So my talk is about this uh, consequence. Uh, many scientists uh, uh, were very surprised since 2000, Arctic uh, rapidly warming and sea ice melting a lot. So they tried to focus on what is the essential structure of Arctic warming. Uh, Screen and Simmons 2010 found that the uh, surface air temperature in the Arctic uh, is very coincident with the sea ice melting. So you can see that uh, in this figure, uh, surface air temperature increase, increasing region, uh, such as, uh, such as, uh, okay. <clears throat> Orange car C here uh, is very coincident with the uh, uh, significant loss of sea ice uh, region. So uh, it completely matches the regional pattern of uh, increasing temperature region is matching with the sea ice melting region. And also interestingly, uh, the scientists, atmospheric scientists found that this is related with the uh, a uh, huge, this region is uh, related with a huge amount of heat release from the ocean. You can uh, see here, uh, we atmospheric scientists call it turbulent heat flux, uh, THF. Uh, turbulent heat flux is also matched with uh, uh, these two regions. We call, this region is Barents Car Sea, this is Chukchi Sea in the Arctic region. Uh, why? Turbulent heat flux is very uh, severe. Here is very has a clear region. Uh, look at this uh, picture. Look at look at this uh, photo. Uh, this is uh, taken from the uh, special Arctic program and ice 2015. Uh, uh, in 2015, Norwegian ship went to the Arctic uh, in the winter season. And then after the winter, uh, they uh, come back to Norway and gather the data and try to improve modeling. Uh, specifically in this figure, we can see the turbulent heat fluxes. Uh, this, uh, <clears throat> you can see the uh, fog from, uh, from the fog uh, above the ocean. Uh, this is mostly due to the a uh, huge amount of energy from the ocean uh, into the atmosphere. Uh, so these, these days, this kind of uh, uh, phenomena happening a lot because uh, less sea ice uh, occupies most of region. Uh, more uh, region, um, many regions are exposed to, to the uh, uh, many ocean, ocean surface is exposed to the very, very cold air in the Arctic. That means a significant temperature uh, difference. This significant temperature difference causes huge energy uh, uh, input to the to the atmosphere. Uh, so this is a very important part of my talk. So remember this figure. 
I will uh, revisit this figure again. <clears throat> so, okay, Arctic is warming faster, and then we atmospheric scientists already understand the structure of Arctic warming. Uh, less sea ice and strong heat flux uh, he is heating the atmosphere. So this is the cause of unexpected warming uh, in the Arctic. This is the reason. Then we can move to other question. Is this our Arctic phenomena is really linked to the uh, middle latitude and especially middle latitude extreme weather? Uh, this is a very hotly debated question. So my uh, major focus was, uh, key question was, is weather really influenced by the warmth or changes in the warmth in the Arctic? Uh, to examine uh, this question, I think I need to I need to uh, I need to have some time to make you understand what is essentially weather. Yeah, what is weather and why do we have it? Uh, maybe most of uh, you don't know uh, the essential reasoning why we have weather, but uh, there is a very clear reason. Yeah. That's because the weather uh, essentially weather exists due to earth rotation and uh, temperature gradient. Uh, if we don't have Arctic, uh, very cold Arctic and warm tropics, we don't have a uh, weather. We can, we atmospheric scientists uh, proved it. Uh, to, to give some uh, idea to you clearly, I show you some uh, laboratory experiment result. Okay, suppose, uh, I'm sorry, suppose, uh, this is a kind of called the dish pen experience. Okay. How can I? Okay. <clears throat> this is the result of this pen experiment. I keep the, uh, this surf, uh, central tank very cold and I keep the outside of a uh, uh, middle tank uh, very warm through the uh, heat pipe. So in this case, uh, weather pattern exists in the middle. You can see the beautiful uh, weather pattern uh, in, uh, inside the middle tank. Uh, be, be, uh, because this is just because Arctic is cold, uh, tropic is warm. And, the, uh, uh, and we also have a rotating uh, Earth. Uh, we atmospheric scientists uh, says that this is called Barochronic uh, instability. Uh, so our atmosphere uh, is configured to cold Arctic and warm tropics. In this situation, our atmosphere is very unstable. So spontaneously, our atmosphere generate, generate large scale vortex, uh, such, like, such like this situation. Suppose we have a, a very laminar flow uh, separated by cold and warm uh, atmosphere. But uh, oh, even, even we don't do anything, uh, this situation is very unstable. So this, this situation is very unstable. So I'm sorry. This state is very unstable. So our nature uh, spontaneously generate this kind of wave phenomena. This is essentially weather, yeah. So, the cold temperature and warm temperature. And in the middle, we have a front. Uh, this is the basic mechanism of barcrenic instability. This is essentially very, in, very uh, important mechanism uh, for generating weather. So in brief, weather is repeated birth and decay of barcrenic eddies, okay? So uh, uh, this is very important to understand how a weather responds to Arctic because suppose we have a, a less cold Arctic, then we may, we may expect the structure of this eddy uh, can change, okay? But it's very difficult to uh, look at the changes of eddies because, uh, because uh, weather is highly volatile and chaotic. And also uh, we are, uh, uh, this laboratory experiment, uh, we uh, exactly configure, from configure the simulation situation very symmetric. 
but we have a mountain and water and very asymmetric conditions uh, hinders. We detect, we clearly statistically detect the changes weather signals uh, uh, given uh, Arctic temperature changes. So nowadays uh, there is a hot, hot debate about the uh, uh, Arctic mid-latitude linkage. So uh, there are uh, believers and deniers. Uh, so many papers are published about this issue and uh, this topic is still uh, hotly debated. We are uh, talking about the genuine region of active warming and the linkage. Uh, fortunately, I could join uh, both meeting, believers meeting and deniers meeting, and I try to understand uh, each uh, idea. Today, uh, I'd like to, actually, uh, my name is, my name appears here, Kim Edar, uh, and so I'm, ki uh, I'm kind of a believer group. Uh, so today, I would like to show you uh, what I'm telling uh, the linkage. So the key point is the huge heat fluxes from the ocean with, uh, over the reduced sea ice area. So we can observe a huge amount heat fluxes uh, in, the, in the exposed area. And statistically, uh, with the observation analysis, I found uh, this circulation pattern. Uh, suppose this is a high pressure pattern and this is a low pressure pattern. Uh, I found that this statistically significant pattern exists when uh, sea ice melts a lot. Note that this region uh, is Barents Karasi where sea ice melts a lot. So over this area, we have a high pressure pattern and low pressure pattern. But uh, we just have uh, 10, or 10 or 11 samples, so statistical significance is hardly tested. So uh, uh, many people don't like this uh, pattern because uh, it's, they think this is not significant. So I tried several times in the journal, but it's uh, rejected. So it's unpublished, but I, it, this figure is still in my computer hard disk. And so I changed my mind. I tried to run the model and uh, give some numerical experiments using very, very simple model. So I prescribed uh, heating here and here uh, where the sea ice melts a lot and uh, did some simple experiments and I got the result. So with this uh, barrent car heating, I got this circulation pattern and another uh, sea ice uh, melting region uh, gives us this pattern. Combining or uh, linearly combining these two patterns, I got this pattern and I obtained a very similar pattern compared to the uh, typical weather pattern uh, uh, when sea ice loss occurs uh, significantly. So comparing these two figures, uh, I, uh, I had a great confidence on the role of sea ice and the um, Arctic and mid-latitude uh, connection. Uh, and we meteorologists know that this is a, a very important, uh, when this pattern occurs, Arctic is very warm and this region uh, suffers very cold. So uh, I called it warm Arctic cold continent pattern. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, this work was unpublished. Reviewers didn't believe it. So inevitably, I need, needed to work with more sophisticated model and more, uh, uh, more analysis with more bigger data. And finally, I, my work was accepted in 2014. Uh, so this is a observed phenomena and this is a model phenomena. It was very similar uh, in the sophisticated model. So after this work, many people uh, tend to believe my work and uh, we work together. Another thing I would like to mention is that during this work, I found another response. Uh, it's a stratospheric response. Uh, this work focused on the troposphere response, but I found that in the stratosphere also, uh, stratosphere is also influenced by uh, sea ice loss a lot. So, 
Uh, this is the schematics of Kim et al. 2014 paper. So sea ice loss uh, gives huge heat fluxes into the uh, atmosphere. It can even uh, change polar vortex in the uh, stratosphere. And then this polar vortex breaking uh, causes uh, downward control of uh, troposphere and it can cause cold winter. Uh, this was uh, my story. So this is the summary of schematics. Uh, even though this mechanism occurs winter, the sea ice melts melt, uh, a lot in the summer and they are driven by uh, more external forcing, uh, global warming signal and more uh, heat, uh, warm water outside of Arctic, Atlantic Ocean is very important source of uh, natural variability of Arctic. So Arctic phenomena is, is controlled by both factors and this input causes uh, more open water in Barents Car Sea and then it generates the pattern, uh, circulation pattern. Uh, even that pattern can uh, propagate uh, to the mid latitude and to the stratosphere and both can uh, uh, change the stratospheric condition and polar vortex weakening in later season, late, late winter season. And then late winter season, this pattern is favorable condition for the melting sea ice in the spring and the less sea ice causes accelerated uh, summer sea ice and this causes more stronger uh, uh, ice heat flux in the Barents Car Sea in the early winter and causes propagation into the atmosphere. So in summary, essentially our weather is very sensitive to Arctic temperature increase. What happens in the Arctic uh, does not remain in the Arctic. Uh, Middle-latitude weather is uh, truly linked to the Arctic condition. Uh, although my and my colleagues' efforts are uh, appreciated now slowly, we still do not have a consensus on many detailed issues. We still have a debate. So to understand what extreme weather we can ex expect in the near future, we need to look at Arctic more carefully. Thank you very much.